So uh, just for purposes of the future, I'll tell people, hi, my name is Allison. Uh, I work in the libraries uh, and learning spaces and services department. Um, I am also on the sustainability committee for the libraries. And so we're doing some uh, activities this month for Earth Month. Um, today actually is Earth Day. So um, one of the things that we wanted to do today um, and that I'm going to do with you all uh, is repurpose a chicken feed bag uh, into a tote bag. Um, and so you can do um, any kind of feed bag. I did it with a bird food bag first. Um, I did a dog food bag the other day that now my dog <laughs> is really obsessed with. Um, and, and yeah, and I actually um, grabbed 25 bags from someone on Craigslist who has backyard chickens. Um, she says she has a couple of bags every month. So um, now I have a bunch of bags <laughs> if anybody uh, wants to, to create a, a, a collection of tote bags. Um, I can get you hooked up with some with some feed bags. So um, I guess we'll start. Um, good to see some folks here. So um, I am in my home. My dog is here, so he may or may not disrupt us <laughs> um, throughout this. Um, he usually does. Um, the bags that she had are mostly um, mostly chicken feed bags. Um, and so there are a couple of different varieties of chicken feed bags. Uh, she also had um, a couple of dog food bags. Um, I've had some wild bird seed bags. So um, one thing that's worth noting, noticing or noting, is they need to be this like this like thick kind of material um, so that it'll hold up. Um, I know some bird food comes in like the smaller, like more flimsy bags. Those will not work. Um, you just have to be able to sew, to sew it. But these are like super durable, which is what brought me to this. Cause I was like, why am I throwing this bag away? It feels, you know, it feels like it's just going to go in the landfill and, uh, stay there for a long time. This is a really sturdy bag. It feels like I could be able to use it for something else. And, um, so then of course went to Google, um, and all kinds of creative people have figured out ways to do this. So um, I sent Claire a couple of links so she can share those um, in the chat. So one is the video that I watched to, to make this. <clears throat> and then there's another one that's like a, um, a blog or something like that that has the directions written out if you prefer um, written directions to a video. Um, and let me see. This is. Oh yeah, picture of a chicken on it. It's great. Um, yeah, you know, I am. I am curious about like ways, and if you all have have thoughts on like how to cover up. If there's a way to like uh, fuse a plastic bag or something on top, so we're not like all walking advertisements. Um, and particularly with the the dog food, like I don't know, whatever. It's functional, uh, which is the biggest thing that I care about. But um. Would love to figure out a way to like make them more sort of creative or I like pretty things so <laughs> put a flower on it or a bird on it. Um, I'm, I'm typically happy. But. Um, so the first thing to do with these is to cut off um, you know where they've done the sewing. You can see I don't know if you can see that well but um, and make a straight edge uh, and one of the things that I love like most about this project and like generally <laughs> is winds up being the philosophy for myself in life it's like doesn't need to be perfect <laughs> um, like I'm not great at straight lines um, I don't know that I ever will be so I've stayed away from like you know really particular sewing projects. Um, this one's super forgiving. So like these bags are huge um, and you can cut it down to make any um, any size bag that you want. So, um, so what I'm gonna do now is just cut off a 
the sewing that they had and make a straight-ish line. There. Obviously, um, you can use scissors. I have like one of these amazing um, rolling cutter, rotary cutters, and I love it. Um, but you do have to have a special mat for it. They are, are a bit of an investment. Um, I finally decided it was worth it to do it, but um, you know, you could do this on the table with scissors as well. I find that my ability to make straighter lines uh, increases with this. Um, so, all right, so we've got a straight, pretty straight line there. And then a couple of things to keep in mind about your bag that I don't want to do is like figure out where you want your, your design, what you want to be the center of your bag. Um, so I want, I want the chicken uh, front and center. I do have some space on top that I'll take down and then some space on the bottom and we'll make our straps from that. So depending on the um, design of your bag, you can decide whether you want to take one strap from the top, one from the bottom or two from either side. Um, you will also be folding down a few inches on the top of your bag, so just keep that in mind. So I'm going to take both of my straps from the bottom of the bag. Um, so these, let me see, yeah, need to be about, uh, about three inches. So I will use... Here to measure three inches. One, two, three. And then these are like 100% worth the uh, investment to be able to like lay the clear ruler down on top and um, still be able to see your fabric and make sure you're in line is amazing. So three inches there. I am a use what you got, so I'm just going to put a candle on the, the edge there to hold this down a little bit because uh, this bag does um, pop up a little bit. Let's see, this says, yes, the straps will be out of the blue part for my bag. But you could, you could do it whichever side you wanted, um, just depending on, you know, if you have a lot of advertisements at the bottom or like nutrition information or you know, a color that you really like or whatever. Um, so there's one. And I'm going to do here. I'm going to line that up. This material is a little bit slippery with those, with the ruler and whatnot. So um, these will be our straps. Um, what we'll do is lay them out here and just cut it into a single strip that way. Let's see, candles and candles. Oh, yes. Yeah, as far as, um, so I'll show you here in a minute, but I had, I had all these sort of around, but you need to like really flatten out your, um, your creases. So um, candles have been perfect for that. Um, one of the things I didn't know about sewing or didn't like really, didn't sink in is that there's a lot of ironing involved. <laughs> um, and I'm not a fan of ironing. Um, so I'm really glad that you don't have to iron these, um, and I don't mind using a candle to sort of flatten it out. Okay, so I'm going to put the bag down here for right now. And then these, what we'll do is actually um, fold it in. We'll fold it in halfway, like that. And we'll just do it like a letter, so... One side into the middle, and this is where the candle comes in. Yeah. 
actually, this is, this is a little longer than we need it to be. So, you want your straps to be about, I think she said 21 inches is what, um, the person on the tutorial said. This is going to be a big bag, so I'm just going to do 25 and cut it there. Is that right? Yeah. I'm going to do 25. So um, that's also a thing that I have, I have found with these tutorials, um, the ones that I've been watching, is all the feed size bags are different, um, and so everything's going to be, you know, you can kind of adjust it to, to whatever it is that you're making. Got one candle there, hold that down, and then I'll use this one to, to make my crease. And it does take a good bit of pressure to like make these creases here. It reminds me of um, a few years ago I took bookmaking class and it was super fun. Very, very exciting. I think we've done, y'all, someone has done, did Robin do some twitches about uh, bookmaking? Um, anyway, it involves a lot of a lot of creasing um, and no scissors for cutting, which was which was pretty cool. So then you get that one, and then you fold the other to meet it. So this will be our strap. No. Looks like my measuring might have been slightly off. So these will be thin straps. Um, oh yeah, skipping the ironing and regretting it. Yeah, this is, it's nice to not have to be so precise with this because <laughs> it's the strap of a tote bag. <laughs> Don't really have to do, uh, no one's going to be examining uh, your stitches or creases, which is good in my case. Okay, so we'll do inside again. And I didn't catch this one, it has a little tear in it, but I think it'll be okay by the time I have sewn everything up. Nice thing about uh, using a candle for these things, they also smell good. <laughs> multi purpose. Multi purpose, which is, I try to do as much as I can. Uh, which is all about one of the things of sustainability. Right? <laughs> How can I reuse this? I use this thing, which sometimes means you have piles of things <laughs> lying around your house, <laughs> like 25 chicken food bags, for instance. Okay, 
Let's see. Do oh, I think it probably would melt um, if we used an iron. Unless you did a cold one. Yeah, you could probably use a like a cold or like warmish iron. Um, but these are like made of plastic, which is why I didn't want to throw it in the trash. Because I was like, well, I know I can't recycle it, but, um, but it's it's made of like this really durable plastic that is not going to break down. So, what else can I do with it? Um, okay, so now that we've got our straps made, or like folded at least. We will show them. And make sure I'm not forgetting a step. Yeah. Um, okay, so we'll start sewing now. Um, I think if you don't have a sewing machine, I think hand stitching this would not be fun. Um, I have seen people use um, duct tape though instead of stitching, so um, what you making? Oh, we are making uh, a tote bag out of a bird food bag. So I'm going to have a full example here. Let me grab one. First one I made. Um, let's see. Here it is. Uh, straps are really long on that, but it's fine. Um, it's all sort of an experiment. So that was a bird food bag, and this is chicken feed. So I think that was like a 20 pound bag. This is a 50 pound bag. Um, so this will be one you could actually fit your groceries in. I think that one's like lunch bag size for me because I like a hearty lunch. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll just sew here along the seam. And oh, one thing that the tutorial mentioned, which I never even really considered uh, before, is to, you want your stitches to be really um, long here and as far apart as you can get it. So I just, um, I have never really, I don't, I don't use my sewing machine for any very elaborate things. Um, but anyway, I just moved the, the uh, settings all the way to the top, <laughs> as, as long and as wide uh, as they could go. Um, that'll just make it more durable. And also if your machine is probably not accustomed to going through materials quite like this, so it'll uh, probably make it easier on the machine rather than trying to go through. Uh, let's see, is it big enough to transport a chicken if necessary? Perhaps. Depends on the size of the chicken, I guess. Um, and does the plastic move differently? Uh, yes. It is not it doesn't work as easily, but it's it's fine. It doesn't seem to be a problem. The only part um, that it is kind of a problem is, let's see, I cut off I cut off the parts, but where, um, like, let's see, you can see here where it's already like doubled or tripled where they where they made their seams, um, but I usually will cut that part off if I can, um, if I can do it. But no, overall, I was I was pretty impressed with how how easy the transition was for my machine. Um, so go back a couple of stitches and just go forward through here. Um, the tutorial that I watched did recommend using a stronger thread than normal, just not like a super thin or, or cheap thread. Um, all I have is super thin and cheap thread, um, except I did, I don't know why I have this one that's really thick, but honestly, I think the cheaper thread worked better than what this does, because earlier this week I made a practice bag and it 
uh, it just, just didn't sew as nicely with the really thick thread. So um, when I used the thinner thread, I just did a couple extra um, seams. And that seems to have worked fine. So use what you got. Um, I used the thinner thread and just made an extra seam just to, to make it a bit stronger. But yeah, it seems to behave more or less pretty normally. It, um, once we start adding the straps onto the bag, there's like a few layers that it's going through and it doesn't like that as much, um, but overall it works pretty well. Okay. So there's that. We have a strap. And they, they do feel pretty durable. All right, and then we'll get this second one here. Oh, <laughs> yeah, same, I do. I, uh, I kind of tend to do just whatever I want anyway. I'm like, I know you said not to do that, but it because I don't have another option <laughs> one or uh, or I want to I just want to see what will happen all right so hope you're not watching this for technique because I don't have that for sure been sewing for a while and I still can't quite manage straight lines uh, for sewing, but I think it's because I can't get straight lines when I'm cutting. <laughs> um, but the good thing about a project like this, again, like it's a tote bag, it doesn't really matter. Um, as long as it, as long as it holds together, it's doing what it needs to do. Um, And I think it makes things unique. Mm. I uh, did a sewing project with my nephews over Valentine's Day. It was really fun. And uh, their parents were out of town, so we made them heart pillows uh, and put pockets on them. They wanted to put a pocket on the pillow. Uh, so we did that, but my, my hearts were, <laughs> I called them dancing hearts, um, just cause they're like, you know, look like they're grooving a little bit. It's pretty fun. Um, they're not your traditionally shaped hearts, but they turned out well. The kids had fun. Um, you know, they have pockets in their pillows for, you know, whatever reason. Maybe the tooth fairy, maybe... For me, it would be to keep a tissue close by. <laughs> Whatever your comfort things are. Let's see. Oh yes, yes, imperfections are really where I where I stand out. Um, okay, so we have two straps. Oh. And it looks actually like I missed the seam a little bit on this one, so I'm going to go back in. Let's go on the inside of this one one more time. 
but I love, I don't know if, if you all had a chance to attend the Mindful Mending workshop last night. I was not able to, but I'm hoping it was uh, recorded or that I can go back. Um, but I have been sort of picking up on that mindful mending trend and um, repurposing and recycling. And I got a really great book for myself um, that sort of talks about that. This is Where Repair and Repurpose. I follow her on Instagram, and she's, like, super fun to follow. Um, there's a lot of really great, easy projects or learning how to uh, darn socks or embroider things or uh, fix your jeans. Um, uh, mindful mending, and then they also call it, oh, visible mending, that's the word. Um, so, you know, you're, you're adding a patch to your, your sweater or your shirt, and it becomes a design feature, which is really cool and unique. Okay, now we have two straps. Um, tutorial for the uh, heart pillow. I just made that up. <laughs> um, yeah, we, we drew hearts and then cut them out and just made them into pillows. Uh, okay. And I let, I let the kids sew the pockets onto the, onto the fabric before we made, and then they stuffed them. It was really cute. Let's see. Da -da. Okay. So we'll move this over here again, get a little more space. One day I will have a dedicated space for sewing and making things. Um, so. We'll turn the bag inside out. Apologies, it's gonna be like super loud. than uh, trying to open a bag of chips in a quiet room. Uh, <laughs> um, right, let's move that away. So, you find the top of your bag, um, which for me will be yeah, this side, and we're just going to roll it down one inch and then another inch. And this is where, if your bag is like huge, um, you can roll it down more. <laughs> That's the beauty of projects like this. One downside to a clear ruler is it blends in. <laughs> uh, that's an inch there. So these are that there.
I hate ironing, but making a really good crease is actually very satisfying. <laughs> I did love that about the, the bookmaking um, process, to be able to like beautifully, you know, perfectly tear uh, a sheet of paper in half was like, I don't know, something very satisfying about that. Okay, so we have top of our bag here. So let's fold it down twice and then this over a little bit. We're gonna put our straps in. So let's see. Should be about six inches in from either side. So we'll make a little dot here. And a dot there. So that'll just tell us as we're going along the scene here when to insert our straps. We'll do the same on this side. And um, so we'll start by just going around the seam of our bag here. like this but it really is a little bit overwhelming to start thinking about like all the chicken food that we we thought about getting um chicken vector chickens and then seeing or thinking about having one or two more of these a month like, oh my gosh it just there's got to be a way to get you know bulk seeds or something like that um but Um, but try, I mean, you can't save everything, but I'm really trying, but I'm not, not always succeeding. Um, so we'll go around and then put, put my strap inside the dot. made the mistake of watching a documentary last night uh, called Sea Spiracy. I don't know if you want to watch that. Uh, it was pretty depressing. Uh, about the amount, well it started out talking about the amount of plastic in the ocean, which is depressing enough in itself. Uh, but then, um, then moved on and like overfishing actually is the main problem. Um, so like one of the best things we can do for climate change and for the planet is to uh, you know, support local fisheries or you know reduce fish from 
pretty interesting documentary. No, but it's, you know, of course, it's like way more than just a talking about climate change and saving these animals, uh, but it's also a huge um, human trafficking problem. Uh, so, all things that you may be aware of, or maybe not, but it's pretty eye opening. All right, so I'll put my second strap in. Here. I used to feel guilty that I didn't eat fish more often because I know it's one of the healthier things to eat. Um, I felt felt somewhat absolved uh, last night. Now I maybe should have made my straps a little bit longer, but that's okay. This will be one I carry by hand and don't don't loop over the shoulder. This will be the one for light things. Bread and chips. Um, I did see another use for these tote bags with people using them for, um, what was it, for container gardens. <laughs> Growing potatoes and carrots uh, in, in their feed bags. You turn them inside out and you make some, uh, some drainage holes for the water. veggies. I have not had a whole lot of success with root vegetables because we live in central North Carolina. <laughs> uh, we do have a lot of clay uh, in our soil here. Okay. Alright, so we made it around once and then we'll fold, fold this up again here. So we'll take our strap, which is down and then we'll sew around the top. Thought I forgot to put my second stress on. I didn't, good news. I cannot tell you how many sewing projects I have um, <laughs> tried to make stockings in the year. I made my pattern and uh, Got almost all the way through with it and realized that I had <laughs> not considered the turning inside out portion of making the thing. So, start from scratch. Um, oh, but actually, I gave up on that project and I did a different one where I didn't want to get rid of all these socks that I had. <laughs> so, I made us. Um, Christmas stockings from socks that I had I cut up and patched them together. They're really cute. I just couldn't bring myself to throw those away. I was like, no, these are these are good socks. And there's a hole in the in the toe or in the heel, but everything else on the sock is fun. Um you know, still can't wear them. But I'm glad. Glad to find a purpose for those, but that was kind of a tricky project. Yeah. So that is the part that the sewing machine doesn't like. It went relatively easily through there. But it's it's like two two layers of the bag folded over and the strap. Also triple folded, so. The only part. Let's see. Oh, 
Oh yeah, I love I love using those stockings. Now I've, now I have this book and I know how to um, darn socks, uh, which is fun. Um, but these holes were quite large because I had let them go longer than I should have. story once about sewing through her finger and so I'm so paranoid now <laughs> about it. She made a lot of her own, you know, clothes and clothes for the kids and things and um, I just cannot fathom sewing through my finger and she had to, she had to reverse sew through it to get it out and I just can't. So, a little of the, the trauma we all carry with us <laughs> through our daily activities. Or not daily, but all the time. She told it very calmly. I was like, yeah, no, it happened. And I said, what did you do? She said, oh, I just, you know, reversed it and went back through. <laughs> what in the world? I feel like such a whim, but we'll okay with that. It's a little bit like a, a scary movie, the lights on my sewing machine when it's going through something. It doesn't light, the lights flicker, and it looks it's about to go dark. And it makes that terrible shutter sound. things about this project. Uh, it's so thick. I'm sure it doesn't get wrapped around. on that but I like I like reversing to uh, just to cover all my bases it's a little bit like the uh, do you soak your beans overnight or do you not um, I don't anymore now that I have an instant pot um, so what we'll, we'll do is just just to um, reinforce this we'll do another line around the bottom so we did it once, we'll do it up here again at the top, and then at the bottom. Uh-oh, let's see. There, I think it just said the computer's going to restart. Um, oh shoot, where did that message go? <laughs> it said restart required, and then, um, then it went away. So maybe it will. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to delay it. I don't know where the um, message went. It was a pop-up and then went away. Let's see. And I'm not used to Max. Let's see. Recently in snooze. Okay. Oh, that's my phone. Um, maybe it just is saying that it needs it, but it's not going to do it. <laughs> okay, well, we'll see. Um,
Hopefully the computer doesn't <laughs> cut out, but I guess we'll we'll see. They, in my experience, they tend to do what they want. Um, we did our, I guess the the major update for work computers <laughs> over the new year and uh, right as the new year was beginning. And because I had continued to delay or snooze my updates. Um, I don't know, I got stuck in some update purgatory where it would update for an hour or two or more and then and then it would say like, we need to update again and it did it six times, I think. I lost a lot of work time to waiting for my computer to update. And, um, and then when I told IT, they were like, oh yeah, we've seen that with people who have delayed the delayed their, their updates for a really long time. It's like, oh, I feel like a little judged. Uh. <laughs> that was fun. Called out. a little bit, um, for me, I prefer it. It's not totally necessary. You could even do another another line across because, you know, depending on what you're loading up in your grocery bag, you may want some extra strength there. Um, I had a, have an uncle and aunt who's told me, uh, said, if you can't tie a knot, tie a lot. Uh, <laughs> And I really appreciated that, like that saying, like, I do not know formal knots, I can't, uh, you know, if you want something to stay, if you don't know the knot to make that happen, then, uh, oh, where's the other end of my strap? Yeah, I'm not a fan of this really thick um, thread. I think the thinner, cheaper stuff works way better. So this was part of our um, Earth Month stuff that we were doing in the libraries. There was a ton of stuff going on all over campus, and really, if you were interested, I definitely recommend checking out what some of the folks on campus were doing. Uh, and at the design school, see, last week was um, Fashion Revolution Week, and they were talking about... Um, the humanitarian crisis and environmental crisis of fast fashion and um, doing sort of a challenge different ways around um, either avoiding fast fashion when you can or, um, you know, I think it can be a bit of a classist sort of argument, um, but, you know, you don't have the money to buy uh, expensive uh, handcrafted things, um, but whenever you do buy it, you know, making it last and using those mindful mending um, skills and just just being mindful of what you do, what you do buy and how often you buy and that kind of thing. Okay, so there is our... We got my... 
straps kind of in the way. In the way I was doing this, this round. But it worked out. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go over this top one again right here. Because where this thread is so thick, it just kind of came out a little bit. that I've made one. <laughs> I guess I'm beginning to figure it out a little bit. Um, also, in my practice run the other day, I like made sure I had half of my sewing time was like, oh, where did I put the scissors? Oh, where did I put... <laughs> I need a thing to press, you know, to make my creases or whatever. So, anyway, I got a lot of that stuff out of the way. Good. Claire and I were talking earlier, but rarely do I ever sit down and do start to finish a project that's like, you know, in and out, in and out, in and out, and uh, I think it's probably going to feel really good to finish a project, <laughs> and you all will be here to witness it. I feel like throughout this pandemic I've started so many different things, and then, uh, you know, lost motivation or time or didn't have exactly what I needed to finish it so it just sort of went by the wayside. Okay. And then I am going to go through one more time just because I do not super like or trust this. I really wish you all could talk to me. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay. I am quite used to talking to myself, so it's nothing new. I'll spare you the singing. That's normally what I do <laughs> with myself. But. Turn up the music. I was talking with one of my nieces and she was here and said the same thing. I don't know, we were talking about something and I, instead of talking to her, was singing. I was, you know, like we were <laughs> on the Broadway stage. And she said, you're just like mommy. You sing everything. <laughs> it's like, that's fair. I feel like we both came by that honestly then. This is my sister. Okay, so, technically, 
basically, our bag is finished, but um, I don't know about you all, I like to have the bags where the bottoms are squared off, um, so we'll do that, because if you don't, right, you're putting all of your pressure on that seam, and like I just said, I don't super trust this seam, um, so what we're going to do is... Squared off on so helpful. This also makes the bag way easier to um, to pack. Okay, so what we'll do is put our finger in here and make this into. Um, there's the uh, make that into a triangle. So we can see and we'll do the same thing on this side. It out so you're making sure you're doing. and then in the tutorial she measured it so well <laughs> since we've got time I'll try that um let's see she did three inches or five inches across this is a pretty big bag so. times but I do think it's more by intuition than the scientific method so you might, you might just stick with that and know that like if I can make the do this make the flap here and then I've got my triangle here so I'm just gonna sew across that. I'm very proud of my puppy dog who's been lying peacefully on his bed over here this whole time. Rarely does he not make his presence known when I'm <laughs> in a meeting or something. Uh, talking to someone. He likes a lot of attention. And he does, he did earlier try to claim uh, one of these bags as his laying spot, even though I brought his bed in here, his super comfortable bed. Uh, he saw the bags on the floor and was like, 
That's where I'll live. That looks like a nice spot. <laughs> she did that special for me. Um, okay. Let's see. Okay. Moment of truth. I'll stop uh, trying to get it straight. But there's my bag. Tote bags. Let's see, where's the Um, so now we can put our grocery things in. Or our chickens or whatever. Um, so yeah, actually that's about the right about the right size for a tote bag and strap will go over my shoulder so awesome so this was a 50 pound bag um you can keep that in mind as you're like figuring out what size bag or what size tote bag you want to make from your bag um a lot of the bird food bags are like 20 to 25 pounds um instead of 50 like this um and then i did 25 inches for my straps, um, and yeah, that's about perfect. Cool! Uh, 50 pounds of lunch, I wish. I wish. Now it's out. So yeah, I did like make record um, speed on this. Um, <laughs> I'm like really surprised. Um, Ikea bags, shame, I haven't seen those, I don't know. Uh, but probably regular Ikea bags. It's, I'm so impressed with it, only took an hour, that's really surprising. Um, I guess goes to show what happens when you sit down and have all the things you need and <laughs> you dedicate some time to it. Um, but... Yeah, and it should be pretty strong, um, you know, again, you can kind of go back and say, like, this is pretty ugly here, this is why I do not love that really strong thread, um, but it, it may or may not hold up better, we'll see. Um, one thing, I am curious about, um, like, if melting, if we, if you could melt, um, like plastic bags or something to like cover up the brands. I don't know. Um, I would love to make them into, you know, not just looking like chicken bags or like this one. This is the dog bag, health food bag. And it has a picture of a guy with his dog on it. I'm like, I don't know, that's a little weird. Um, I guess I can finish this one while we're here. Uh, this one I did not finish yesterday, so maybe the other day. Um, some kind of embroidery. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, yeah, I wonder... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you probably, I wonder what kind of thread you would use or what kind of... Um, yeah. I did, I did um, see some, another... Uh, watch some things about people fusing um, plastic bags together, that kind of thing. Um, plastic grocery bags together. Um, and then I also read, make sure you do it outside because it's toxic. <laughs> like, good tip. Um, and, you know, people were making, like, 
sandwich uh, containers and that kind of thing from them. Um, you could wrap your sandwiches in it. And then I, I read another one that was like, the research is mixed about, you know, whether it's safe to wrap your sandwich in that. So you can line it with wax paper or parchment, parch I think. Um, which I thought was a neat idea. So, I don't know. I'm not, not ruling it out. But um, I also... I have been really wanting those uh, beeswax, like cloth things for wrapping sandwiches or snacks or, you know, putting over your bowls and that kind of thing. And um, they're super expensive and I can never really bring myself to buy it because we don't really use saran wrap that much anyway, so it's not like a huge, it's not much of a problem for us. We buy like a roll every year and a half or something. Um, so. But I really like the cloth ones, and then I found a DIY um, where you cut your fabric and you have um, oh, did I run out of my bobbin? Um, where you cut your fabric and uh, you have food grade uh, beeswax that you can then dip your piece of it. Um, you uh, put the pellets out on your uh, cloth and then you bake it like on a low, you put it in the oven on a really low temperature and then you can melt the wax on it and then you have your own waxed things. Punch holes, oh, hole punching wheat. Yes, I like that. And you could just use yarn, like really simple. Um, not even have to use like any embroidery thread or something like that. That would be cool. I knew you would come up with something awesome. All right, I'm gonna thread this. Wind, wind the bobbin. Um. But yeah, no, I love that idea. Whole punch. I wonder too, actually, if you all know this, I was curious yesterday thinking about what, do they have yarn needles? Because, you know, threading a needle is hard enough anyway, but I, I wanted to sew some stuff with yarn and I was like, I don't know how I would do that. And if it's like a huge needle that then you would do that uh, with. I'm not doing this the right way. I'm trying to take a shortcut and we'll see if it works or if it blows up in my face. Hopefully not. But it felt like it felt like it needed um, still needed to be a sharp point because I've had some some that are uh, like plastic needles. I was like, no, that, that wouldn't work, but. Okay. So, I'll do this. And then. I used to have my grandmother's uh, sewing machine. And I was like, this will be so special. I'll learn to like use her sewing machine she made. 
my mother's wedding dress with this and like you know all these really special things and uh, she was an amazing uh, oh. it's the other thing I don't like about this thread it's so thick it's hard to get through the thing um, but anyway I had it and every time I got it out like something broke and I can't <laughs> Like, I just didn't know enough about sewing, unfortunately, I did not learn um, any sewing from her, and so I just kept thinking, like, well, I'll figure it out, you know, bit by bit, and then, um, she, what was that? Oh. Um, anyway, I finally decided, like, I'll just, I'll just get my own, get a new, new sewing machine, because it was old, and it was, you know, there was no... No user's manual for it, nothing that, and it just kept always needing something, so I was finally asked for one for Christmas. Okay, there we go. I think we should be good to go now. All that. So we'll redo this line since that one did not have bobbin in it. Um, there was a connection there. I, <laughs> yeah, it was something with the bobbin. The bobbin always like broke uh, when I was using her sewing machine. That's why I told that story. Um, and I did not know what any parts were. And called an, uh, an aunt who knows a lot about sewing. Was like, you know, she kept asking me, like, well, is, is the bobbin this or that? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Can you just come and fix it? <laughs> uh, and that's when we sort of decided I should just get one that I knew how to use and that had a manual and all that kind of stuff. And this has been a good one. I have enjoyed it. But I'm curious if you all have had other, um, seen other projects, um, for, that are earthy, good, good sustainable, um, things that you want to do or have done, because I'm, I mean, I guess, like, I'm always starting new projects and I don't always have time to finish, but I'm, I love to be inspired. You have, if you have things that you've been doing, I would love to hear or see about them. Okay, and I'm going to go through one more, one more time. I do really want to try to make those beeswax um, cloths, though. Maybe I'm just really cheap. I know that's true, I am. But, uh, <laughs> like, $20 for three of these things. Uh, and I know I'm going to need way more than three. You know, I'm going to wrap a sandwich or the chips or whatever. Put it over a salad bowl. I don't know if I mentioned it, if we said it at all, but the, the winners of our Earth Month Challenge will win, um, we have zero waste starter kits, and so it's, uh, like bamboo cutlery set, the straws, and a couple other, a couple other things, uh, that folks can, can use to get started on their zero waste journey. That is a long road, I don't know, zero waste feels like a long ways off, and we are already okay over here, but let's see. to be a little more precise with this one.
And uh, yeah, if you are library staff, don't forget to turn in your Earth Month Challenge uh, card today. Today is Thursday. Uh, we'll put together some pictures and send out an update on Monday. I would love to see it if you make if you make one of these bags. Um, and if you, I know it said it in the event thing, but if you uh, want to make a bag or if you want to make like a whole bunch of bags. Oh, I think I did mention this one. But I have, I have a ton of shapes, so. Let me know if I can set you up, set you up with some bags. how these bags are made in the first place with the feed bags. It's these tiny strips of plastic uh, that are woven together. Okay. Reuse your reusable cloth. Oh yeah. that my dog is not even lifting his head for this part. Usually he hears the sound and he knows it's a snacker. T-R-E-A-T-E-R. person <laughs> on my grocery bag but now so now we have three different size bags turn that off so I can see. Mm. Okay. The chicken the dog and the person quite a collection yeah, the people and the dog, they're pretty huge. Um, and, oh, there's another one that's got like, I don't know, um, like pictures of the food or, you know, I don't know. It's like, got, oh, it's another dog food bag and it has like, you know, all the ingredients that are in the food. So it's like, pictures of potatoes and <laughs> rice and peas and things. Um, so, um... Yeah, I don't know what to do now that <laughs> I finished those two up. Um, should I start another? I have more bags in here. I'll have a whole, a whole bunch by the time we're done. Hmm. 
Um, I will talk about this book. It's awesome. Um, it's so it's so handy, and it's all um, it's like all very practical things. And it, she I don't she just has a great voice um, as she writes about things. And it actually started as a school project, um, and she started her Instagram account and. Um, and then it grew, and so this is the one, I think she just had the one-year anniversary of the book, and it is, is great, but it has projects like, um, doing the sashish, sashiko, I think that's how you say it, sashisko, um, mending, that's the visible mending, um, and really cute things like clothes worth wearing are worth repairing, and it's just, um, she has all these different ways to make... Oh, yeah, this was cool. T-shirt yarn. And you cut up your T-shirts. And then you sew the um, stuff together. So also you can see, like, her style is very much my style of sewing, where it's like, yeah, just cut it and tie it together. <laughs> um, and then she has different things that like you can make. Pom-pom earrings uh, from your T-shirt yarn. Um tassels, um, a rug from your t-shirts. I really want to do that one day. I want to, um, take my old towels and, um, cut them up and then make a, a bath rug from old towels. So that's, that's a thing that I want to do one day. Um, and yeah, making pillows and all kinds of cool stuff. She crochets, uh, with her t-shirt yarn, which is really cool. Um, yeah, I know, the old t-shirts, because, uh, um, I was reading about, um, I think it's something like less than 40% of clothes that people donate to, you know, places where you donate clothes, uh, less than 40% actually make it, like, into the store, <laughs> Um, and then, like, even fewer of those are even, like, purchased and, like, make it onto someone, you know, to someone who needs it. Um, and, you know, the models for those are, like, really, a lot of them are pretty corporate and, you know, it's sort of problematic if branding themselves as charities and then they're, like, making a lot of money off of, off of it. Um, but how much stuff actually just makes it straight to the landfill, like, doesn't even... They used to reuse a lot of the materials, and now um, so many of the fabric, I guess one one final destination for old clothing was to be recycled and then repurposed into like shop rags for, um, for car shops, um, but now they are highly flammable because so many of our clothes, and even though it's polyester, is plastic, um, and so, um, so you know, it's really flammable um, materials that they can't can't reuse. It doesn't degrade, doesn't biodegrade in the landfill. So, finding a way to like turn it into a into a rug or into a pillow or you know something like that um, is you know it's worth worth sort of thinking about. Even even when you donate things, it's like okay, well where is that? Where is it going? <laughs> is it helping anybody? And actually, it goes a lot of it. Um, it doesn't make it into the local thrift stores. It's shipped overseas and then sold in second-hand markets there. And they um, and then that actually disrupts their clothing uh, sort of ecosystem. And <laughs> I was like, gosh, this is such, a, such an interesting, huge problem. Um, yeah, oh, cutting them up to use them as rags. Um, yeah, yeah. Don't work with fire while cleaning. I learned the hard way. I have the pants that I'm wearing, actually. Uh, this is embarrassing, but funny. Um, I was with some friends, and they had a fire outside, and I had on a, a second pair of pants underneath it, so I didn't notice, but I burned holes in the back of my pants standing too close to the fire. Um, at, because they melted. Um because they're this, like, polyester material. Uh, so now I have, like, really cool patches on the back of my pants. But, um, but yeah, it melted. Um, those things were, like, highly flammable. Um, so, anyway, good that I didn't go up in flames. Um, but, 
but yeah, thinking of different ways to use, use, you know, whatever we have. We have our, all of our towels have sort of a life cycle here. The kitchen towels will go from, you know, ones that we hang out uh, to then ones that we use. I'll cut them up to, um, to then clean um, with them. And then uh, we also, in the past, what we've used are t-shirts or like old towels and things where we'll cut them into strips and use them um, in our garden as like when we put the stakes in the ground and we're uh, tying uh, tying the plants to the stakes, it's a nice stretchy fabric um, so that it doesn't um, doesn't harm the plant and not bind anything. So that's t-shirts. We haven't done that with towels or anything like that where we were cleaning. I think that would be too thick, but um, just trying to find uh, you know different ways you can can reuse things. Um, Yeah, but it does <laughs> does make for sometimes things to be a little bit more messy um, around the house. So, um, well, I don't want to like keep rambling and telling stories about me <laughs> burning uh, holes in my pants. Um, but I can start making another bag if that feels. Like that way we can um, fill the rest of the, the time. I don't want uh, to leave dead air. Um, so let's do that. I have another bag right here. We'll just add to the collection. Um, But yeah, reading reading that we're repair repurpose, I got super inspired. Um, seeing all the stuff that she was was doing in an effort to keep things out of the landfill, and um, yeah, if you look at all into the fashion, like the fast fashion industry, it is really really disturbing. Um, I didn't realize it's actually the second highest polluter in the world. I think it pollutes pollutes more than the airline industry, which is wild. Um, in terms of like water consumption, and then also water pollution, and then the carbon footprint for like shipping um, clothes for making the factory. I mean, it is, it is a way bigger problem than I could even imagine. Like, so landfill, land, you know, landfill tends to be the problem that we talk about, which is a problem. Um, but yeah, they a lot of the places where the <clears throat> the clothes are dyed and all that, they they put the they put the waste from that into water streams, um, and then of course these factories are in places where they don't regulate that kind of thing or. Um, And they have like terrible human rights sort of records as far as like working conditions and working pay and all that kind of stuff. So, so pollution is a problem, but also there's a very human human element to it um, that you know I think. That's been one of my uh, sort of awakenings this year, I guess, and thinking about sustainability is sort of intersectional sustainability and like not only, um, you know, how, how is it, how is the problem of climate change affecting not only the earth, but people who are living here? And then how do we, uh, How do we, you know, not not overlook that that problem or or focus only on one part of it, um, and thinking about, you know, not only like good things, but you know where we want uh, like green spaces and that kind of thing, incorporating those into communities. But then, are you are you gentrifying an area so that you can um, have 
people moving moving in who desire, you know, certain thing and they can pay certain prices. Um, I had never heard the term, what is it? Oh yeah, green gentrification. Um, where, yeah, basically public lands are creating greenways and green spaces in rural or low-income areas. And now, you know, I mean, that's a problem here where I am. I live the green, the Noose River and the Greenway is right, right in my front yard. Um, and this is a place that a lot of the people in the neighborhood, you know, are here and used to be able to access the river um, from their own property and now have this huge amount of traffic on the Greenway um, and sort of have to compete with access to it and compete for access to it. And it's interesting, you can see um, there, you know, we've got the the cyclists who are out with the Greenway, the Noose River Greenway is um, is 26 miles, I think. And sorry, I want to make sure I get that right. The same. Yeah, it's 26 miles or something like that. So, so a lot of like serious cyclists come out here and they are trying to get in. You know, they're 50 miles or whatever because they're training for their race and so they're like flying <laughs> along the greenway making it a pretty un family friendly place or if you want to try to walk your dog or whatever um and then and then there are some other people who have dirt bikes and um like ATVs and they're like getting going down the so then they're on the greenway with a motorized vehicle and they'll all get in fights on the greenway and it's really interesting. I'm like, well, none of y'all <laughs> no one should be going faster than however, you know, whatever the speed is, but it is an interesting uh thing. Yeah, yeah. Um there Hotter trees have been uh, removed so that there's lighting, yeah. And there are more and more um, just harmful, like, processing, um, you know, factories or, or plants and that kind of thing that are in, in those communities uh, that increase the temperature and increase the pollution, the air, or like, you know, the air quality um, suffers because of the the local pollutants and and compounded by the lack of trees to then uh, absorb that and it is a problem. Um, and then last night when I was watching that. Seaspiracy, I uh, heard something like the ocean, I guess the ocean was totally overlooked in the Green New Deal, which, um, full disclosure, while I, I support, I have not read it, uh, <laughs> don't know, don't know what all it does include, but it didn't include um, anything about the ocean, apparently. And so someone else wrote um, one for called the Blue Blue New Deal or something, and just talking about the different measures that we need to take to preserve the ocean in, in terms of climate change and the carbon, what is it the carbon and coral the carbon that coral reefs can store is like forty five percent more than the than the entire Amazon rainforest. I mean, it was something outrageous. It was like what. Um, and so, overfishing has 
been a problem for for a lot of reasons is taking out the coral reefs, but then also the fish when they um, defecate, it goes into the coral reefs, which is food for them to they regenerate, and then it's absorbing a lot of the um, light from the sun and like all of these. I mean, it was just it was pretty pretty wild to think. Um, they, they all acknowledge, like, planting trees is good. We need to continue to plant trees. The carbon capture from trees is is, um, is part of this equation, but um, the ocean plays a much larger role than, um, than we tend to talk about. I know, I mean, it's tough. They were talking about um, soil vitamin deficiencies. Plants are not able to make those. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if you ever read Michael Pollan's, um, what was that book? Omnivore's Dilemma, I think. It was one of the first ones that I read of his. And, you know, pretty interesting to think he did one of the whole first chapters or first section of the book maybe was about corn and how you are you are what you eat right and the um if everything's eating corn <laughs> uh so you know our 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 food sources whether it's animals and they're all being fed corn instead of grass so that they're typically you know have evolved to eat um they're not getting the nutrients from those things so even if we think we're eating healthily we're not not getting the nutrients that we need because the plants or animals that we're eating don't get the nutrients that they need and yeah even even with with uh, vegetables I recommend the sea spirit it was good it was opening but it did also feel a little bit like conspiracy theorist <laughs> um, a bit but the um, there was another one that we watched on Netflix called uh, Kiss the Ground, and that one was really good. It's all about the soil and how uh, we really need to change our farming practices so that um, our industrial farming practices, so that they're not stripping the earth of its topsoil, which takes like thousand a thousand years I think to make like an inch of topsoil and you know we just like bulldoze um, through it for construction projects and then also for farming um, you know they till up till up the ground and all the the nutrients or all it just releases a lot of carbon into the into the air and they had all these um, Images, I guess, I don't know if it was live or if it was just images from NASA, um, where you were, they were tracking carbon um, and in the atmosphere, and you could see these, like, huge clouds in April, and the farmer was like, so, you know, what are we doing in April? And it's like, we're all, we're all tilling, <laughs> um, tilling the land, and so, to, you know, to get ready for planting and thinking, I mean, all the carbon that we're, you know, carbon is our big problem. That's why the air is, the earth is warming, and that we're releasing more and more of it into the atmosphere, and simultaneously uh, destroying the things that capture it and, and keep it in the ground. Um, so, and these sort of networks that. Um, plants use to transfer nutrition and um, actually actually communicate. Um, I've been reading a lot about mushrooms. Um, lately I've got a book called Entangled Life and um, I love this they call it the wood wood wide web um, and so all the mycelia that are sort of the, it's, you know, when we, when we think of mushrooms and fungus, like we, we think of the fruit, um, but 
there are these like huge networks of roots and um, those are the mycelia that are and they connect not only other fungi but like all the plants in in a forest or in a garden or in a yard in any ecosystem um, and they they do they transfer nutrients they um, I don't know exactly how this works, but they will indicate like um, like danger or drought or you know just different kinds of things. It's so interesting. Oh, I see. They, their Instagram's been really bad at promoting what hate towards indigenous communities. Um. Yeah, Seaspiracy felt like, I don't know, I wasn't, there, there was something that felt a little bit off about it, but it was really interesting. But yeah, I don't know about their, I haven't seen anything on their Instagram. But it, it sort of felt like, <laughs> in the depths of despair, like there's no, no, uh, No answers. Was it the, I'm curious what it was the CSPRC um, Instagram that's promoting hate towards indigenous communities? I mean, at least from what it looked like in in the documentary, they were critical of the food and like the seafood seafood market market and industry of taking taking food from indigenous communities. So that's why I'm a little bit surprised that. But again, it's not like something I I hadn't read a lot about it or or followed them or heard anything else about them. So. I'd be interested to look more into that. Because it is, it is so, like, there's so many things that are so connected. Like, how do you... 
um, you know, these, so that people can, you know, enjoy, enjoy our, you know, meal of seafood or whatever. They're overfishing, and this was a lot in, uh, in West Africa, and people who were indigenous farmers or, or um, fishers living where they were and they couldn't couldn't even get out into the ocean to go and fish because these like huge 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 ships um, were out there taking up all the space making it you know they're in a canoe you can't uh, can't compete with that and how dangerous and then even being you know regulated so that the commercial fisheries had priority You all have watched other other things on Netflix or otherwise I'd be interested in your in your recommendations. Even um, we've been watching some of the David Attenborough um, specials and I guess was it National Geographic? Um, anyway, just talking about what a sort of falsehood that those things are, are uh, promoting that these, you know, animals out in the wild and this, is, it looks sort of like a protected area, but they're living right next to, right next to communities and how you completely cut out the fact that, you know, there are humans living in this same area and those humans are interacting with those animals and then, um, just, it just is a, a narrowed, narrowed view of what is a much bigger picture in so many ways. straps are going to be better than my last ones. I don't know if this bag is different or I'm just cut differently, but it feels a bit stronger. And the thread seems to be behaving a little bit better also. Yeah, much better. Uh, the width measurement for the straps is um, three inches. some dust in it. Yeah, three inches for the strap and then we fold this down one inch.
Take off my chicken's head. Oh well. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been really um this let's see, the first week of April, um there was a who was the group? I don't know if it was the student um, sustainability stewards, but they did a, a really great week-long symposium on food justice um, and food accessibility, but then also like um, agriculture workers, you know, farmer workers' rights, um, particularly in North Carolina, and because we do have a lot of migrant workers in North Carolina and they are not protected in a lot of um, in a lot of cases. Um the yeah, regenerative agriculture. Oh, I know this in terms of that. Um they're trying to incorporate um, more sort of agricultural themes, I guess, into parks, like actual, like, community farms and gardens into some of the city and county parks, um, in White County, um, in particular, but, and it's something, I don't know if you all, um, attended any of the NC State Food and Housing Insecurity, uh, webinars that the libraries hosted, and then, um, Vasa has hosted as well, like really enlightening to see, you know, some of the scenarios that students in our community are dealing with, staff are dealing with. Um, and someone, someone in that, in one of the webinars brought up like, hey, you know, we're an agricultural school. Can we have, you know, why don't we have a, um, a community garden on campus? And um, they said that there had been one in the past. Uh, there's also the agroecology uh, educational farm. I think Tisha, you would know about that. Um, I missed I missed the talk on that one, but I was really curious. Oh, nice. Thanks. But it does seem, you know, like, like at NC State in particular, like we're in a, we're in a position to um, talk about sustainable and regenerative agricultural practices and as, you know, and working with uh, the extension agencies and all those folks who are going out into communities and promoting practices and best practices and doing educational programming it just seems great. slow from when I was sewing with my nephews. <laughs> oh shoot. I sped right through my 
dot where I was supposed to put my <laughs> my handle. <gasps> What seam rippers are for? Um, okay, let's see. Yeah, always, always keep my seam ripper handy. That was a pretty seam too. Oh well. Make another one. Pedal in the right place is always tricky. A little faster than a bit. Okay. finish this one. Uh, well, I'm not about to finish this one, but I could have a bag an hour. That's not too bad. With a little practice, I got a lot better. Um, so, I don't know. Maybe I'll have 25. Uh, <laughs> I'll go through these 25 bags more quickly than I thought. leave it there for now um this has been fun <laughs> thanks for joining me you all um and yeah if you have bags and you want or if you don't have bags but you want to make some um let me know <laughs> thanks y'all for coming have a good day Happy Earth Day!